So it is the last day here at Everything Electric, and we are going to answer one of those questions that perennially comes up, both in with good intent, but also quite often with ill intent, which is what happens to the batteries? Because people are often very concerned about what happens to electric vehicle batteries. In part, that's because there's a lot of misinformation about how long the batteries last. As we know, batteries now last much longer than expected, and really this lifetime question becomes much, you still need to recycle them, but it's not the, oh, I need to recycle them after a couple of years, which is often commented on. However, at the end of a vehicle's life, if it's involved in an accident, or when the battery does eventually wear out, there are an awful lot of useful minerals in those batteries that can be reused. And at the moment, there's a lot of concern about making sure we have capacity to do that when the current fleet of electric vehicles starts to reach end of life. And I am lucky enough to be joined by Shaheem from Recyclico, who is going to talk us through the process of recycling batteries and give us a real insight into how this all works. Shaheem, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, can you let our viewers know what it is that you do? Well, recyclable battery materials, we have a patented process that recovers up to 99% of cathode metals from battery waste, be it an a end-of-life battery or pre-consumer, which would be a cathode scrap metals during the time of production. Okay, so that would be batteries that maybe either failed quality control or were used in a pre-production vehicle that wasn't ever intended to go onto the road, something yeah. like that? Well, what happens is during the time of run-up into making a gigafactory cell manufacturers, they have about a scrap waste. Mm -hmm. Those are cathode metals that are that have been sprayed on aluminum foils and they do not meet the spec, the, the quality control has failed. So those are pre-production scraps, cathode scraps. Once they're grinded, they're known as black powder. End-of-life batteries are uh, batteries that are damaged, defective, or rejects, and of course, that have do not meet the standards of uh, continuation into a vehicle. Those batteries, they are grinded up, and they are known as black mass. And so, what is the process that the batteries go through after they've been ground up? Or in fact, let's start at the beginning. You get a battery that's arrived at the factory. What happens next? Right, so this recycling has many steps. So stage zero is a collection of these batteries. Stage one would be uh, collecting these batteries and then shredding them to get into the black mass or black powder. Stage two is then the step of taking this black mass or black powder and then putting them through a hydromet process to recover these battery metals. So that's the part we come in. Our process starts after black mass and at uh, black powder level, the cathode scraps. Cathode is where our biggest focus is. Those are the lithium, nickel, cobalt, magnesis in these batteries. So what we do is we go through a leaching process, impurity removal process, then electrolysis. It goes through a reactor. And what we do is we separate the, the carbon or the graphites or the anodes from this uh, black mass. And what we are left with is basically, you know, MHP, the lithium, nickel, cobalt. We separate the lithium solution out first and we get our lithium hydroxide or lithium carbonate. And then what we are left with is precursor material, which is commonly known as PCAM. And of course, these are all at battery grade uh, level of the product so that they can be sold then to off to a cam manufacturer, a cell manufacturer or a gigafactory to be put back and made cam out of it. So this is something that we've actually talked about a little bit before on the channel, but what about people who are concerned about the quality of materials that are recycled? Is there anything that you would say to them? Because what does the research say about that material that's been taken back from the batteries? Right, so, so the, the battery materials that we have recovered, they have to meet certain standards. For that, you have to have a spec from each cell manufacturer to produce the lithium hydroxide carbonate to that spec. That's one. Second part is also precursor, has to meet the morphology, the crystal size in polycrystal, single crystal, tap density, all those spec has to be met. That's like the secret source every cell manufacturer has in place. So that's where we work with these cell manufacturers, get their spec, we produce the material to that spec, and then they go through a validation process. Of course, has to be all at battery grade material, right? So example, lithium, lithium has to be at 95.4. That's the grade it has to be at. And then, of course, the others at up to 
So that's the process we have to go through it. And that, that's where the recyclable strength comes in is because our materials have been validated independently by cell manufacturers to say that it, it meets the standard to go into the battery or it has been benchmarked against a virgin material and it is, it is equivalent to a virgin source. Now that's really interesting and I know that some of the researchers suggested that even recycled materials can actually produce better batteries and perhaps that's because you're ending up with fewer imperfections in those crystals. I don't actually know what they found from that but I did find research that suggests that. Is that something that you've had experience with? I haven't, I haven't come across that research but I can tell you that the cells have been made with our product and they meet this test. Uh, actually we have published the validation report that has benchmarked our product at 50 degree cycles, charge discharges, made half cells, full cells from it by these companies and they said we perform, if not better, same as what they had produced with a virgin material. So that's where the comfort we take. Validation is key in this business. If you do not have a validated product, you do not meet the standards to go back into the battery. Now one of the other things that's interesting about Recyclico is that your process doesn't require a big factory, as I understand it. It's more modular than that? Can you talk about that a little? It is. Given the feedstock that we receive or we know that is available out there, we build a modular system. Our business model is to co-locate where the materials will be, which is given extended producer responsibilities out there, rules and regulations coming, they can be co-located to where the uh, cell manufacturing is going to happen. So our idea is to build modular system that can be expanded as feedstock increases. So we co-locate, we process the material over there, and we give it back to the cell manufacturer to be put back into the making batteries. So this is a, a much smaller footprint building or, or system that's, that you're creating. Bespoke to the need, yes. Much smaller system. You know, the idea of building an independent recycling facility and hoping the feedstocks will come, it just it just introduced a lot of impurities, a lot of mixed bags of uh, products that we have to clean in, and process. So we have a much cleaner process, homogeneous material that being processed at the location. Yeah. So have you got any deals with that you can talk about with companies to start installing this system? Yes. Yeah, so our first commercial scale-up that has that we have engaged in is in Taiwan. The partner that we have partnered with as a joint venture is a 50-50 joint venture. That's where our first commercial scale-up is going to happen, and that's where it's happening right now. It's being designed right now, and that our partner is already embedded in with this uh, battery material supply industry and the cell manufacturers in Taiwan. So that's our first, we're excited about the first commercial scale-up happening in Taiwan right now. That must be a really exciting time for you to be scaling up in this way. It is, it is, and we have learned a lot. So we have gone through our R&D process, our pilot project, and then we built a commercial grade mini commercial uh, demonstration plan. So we were able to scale up from there and it allows us to scale up as the feedstock increases. You know, we can add lines. We have a 2000 metric ton units design and we can keep adding lines as the feedstock increases. So that way it's not like build a huge one and batteries will come. You know, I can tell you one thing, batteries will be dying to do business with us, but we did not want to do an overbuild and suffocate that there's not enough feedstock available to process them. That must be really useful for companies because right now we are at a stage where electric vehicles are just starting to enter the mainstream, just starting to become more common. And we're going to get this massive increase over the next few years where suddenly companies are going to start requiring much larger facilities. But being able to do that in an incremental way must be really useful to them. 100% it's low capex, risk is shared, and we know it feedstock will increase. Whether you say the EVs are in decline or in uptrend, it's up for debate. But what we know, if we are building it, they will be coming. Whether they come today, tomorrow, it's coming. However, what we have is the low-hanging fruit, which is every time a gigafactory is being constructed, there is going to be a pre-production scrap that will come out of it. So we can start processing those materials now while we are waiting for other feedstocks to come. I mean, you'll be surprised to know how much black mass is out there. There is a lot of black mass out there. It's that we don't, consumers don't hear. We relate consumers to Teslas of the world, the Kias of the world, but there are EV trucks out there. You know, I was in South Korea not too long ago, and I found out that uh, a Volvo truck had 28,000 cells in it. 
that's a lot of 18650 cells in it in one it's like a it's like a mine and you know waiting for me to put it through our urban mining I like to you know coin it as a phrase that our process is more of an urban mining process you know the material is already there it's mine it's available to us it's just waiting for me to die and come back to me well thank you so much this has been really interesting to hear about where can people find out more about what you do sure yes you can visit us we are publicly traded our symbol is amy.b on TSX Venture Exchange you can visit our website recyclico.com get in touch with us we can have more conversations on it Thank you again, Shaheem, and thank you to you at home for watching. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There's a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Bree Crockford, Cap, Christian Buell, Everything on a Babagel, Pitcher Ian, and Brett Chandler. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. Address is also down below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below too. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!